Hello everyone and welcome to Sinful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video, we have a Black Library review for Warhammer 40,000. Today, we're going to check out the Space Marines Conquest story, War of Secrets by Phil Kelly. Now, this one was released a little while ago. I remember reading Devastation of Baal, and there's a whole series of these, apparently, and I really enjoyed the, back in the day, the Space Marine Battles novels. And these, I guess you could say, are sort of a successor to them, a more Primaris-focused version of them, uh, narrating, you know, major stories around the more modern 40k setting so if you did like those space marine battle novels i would strongly recommend going and giving these a check out i've done a couple of these already um so with that said this one is narrated by john banks who does a fantastic job of voice acting any story he takes part in in warhammer 40k or warhammer age of sigma um he is probably one of the best voice actors gw hire on a regular basis i like to listen to the audio versions of these they're coming out um, but also, like, I listen to these while I do other hobby, while I'm painting, building, uh, editing or recording uh, other bits and pieces that I need to, putting all videos together for you to watch. So, with that said, um, let's get cracking in. Let's talk about the story. This, I think, was book three. I think I've done Ashes of Prospero and The Devastation of Baal already, uh, so you can check them out if you want to go get into them. But they are all independent stories. They're just in, I guess, the same series of themed stories around Space Marines and the Battle of Safe Face. And so our story takes place with Lieutenant Zedro Farron, a Primaris Marine stronger and more adept than even the Space Marines his Brotherhood is sent to fight alongside. This, we know, Primaris Marines, you know, that next sort of greatest sort of Space Marine in the universe. As the Dark Angels, who he's been sent to fight alongside, and the Primaris Marines fight a trauma scarred force of Tau, hellbent on destroying their former allies, the true quarry becomes clear. Now, the former allies are a bunch of humans within the story, um, and so the child are trying to destroy them. The shadowy instigator of a psychic curse, though, is the true sort of quarry here, uh, plunging a string of Imperial planets into madness with his psychic sort of curse. And as well as burn in the fires of battle, an unthinkable pact is struck. Uh, while the Primaris Marines peeling back layer after layer of deceit uh, finds the appealing truth behind the Dark Angels. Can Farron himself hope to emerge from the web of lies without losing both his honor or even you know, beyond that, his life, his very life indeed. Today's video is brought to you by Gap Games, a fantastic retailer in Australia for a variety of different miniature war games. If you'd like to help support the channel, we have an affiliate link where by clicking on and purchasing, you'll help support the channel, but you'll also help support Gap Games, which is a fantastic servant to the community. And so this story's purpose, this story heavily focuses on the Dark Angels, obviously, with the picture here and its Cold War of Secrets, uh, with their relationship and the Primaris Marines who are slowly being inducted into the chapter. Now, this is the very sort of beginning of the Dark Angels and the Primaris Marines. They are very new to the chapter. Many don't even see them as true sort of members of the chapter at this point. Um, but this story focuses on the hierarchy or the inner circle of the Dark Angels, if you will, uh, and the knowledge those particular members of the Dark Angel hold about both the past of the Dark Angels and indeed the Fallen, and how they go about keeping such knowledge away from the prying eyes of the Primaris Marine recruits uh, and keeping them at arm's length and sort of how that sort of relationship and that knowledge of maybe inducting different people into from the Primaris Marines and inducting them truly in the chapter and the gaining the knowledge the chapter has about its own past and its terrible dark secrets. And so our main character is Lieutenant Zedro Farron. He is a Primaris Lieutenant, and his rank is sort of, I guess, somewhat under criticism. There are many within the Dark Angels hierarchy who don't sort of recognize his rank, don't like that he's just been added in, and he has this officer's rank. They don't view him as an equal and stuff like that. So he has a lot of problems. And indeed, he has had some issues with his command before. So there are particular members of his own uh, Primaris contingent that don't particularly always listen to his advice because he has unfortunately led them down 
the wrong path before. His leadership qualities have not always been the most accurate. He's not always made the right choices, but such is the issues with leadership. And so what does change about Lieutenant Zedro Farron over the course of this story? Um, now, definitely it is a story about the Primaris finding their way to be inducted truly within the Dark Angels chapter, truly finding their place, their home, their respect of their brothers. And that is definitely a lot of what evolves over this. But also uh, his sort of view of what the Dark Angels are, you know, this sort of noble first founding chapter that he's a part of and learning that they, you know, while they are, yes, the first, they are also dark and, well, full of lots and lots of dark secrets. Um, so he does sort of gain a bit of the grim demeanor that maybe the Dark Angels are famous for because of what he learns throughout the course of the story he becomes very much more like a dark angel grim uh studious um suspicious and you know a little bit careful as well in how he sort of procures and produces himself to the world and those around him and so what does this story do well? And for me, I think actually the best part of the story isn't even about the Space Marines. The Tau in this story have fantastic representation and I think they are portrayed in a really good light. They are Tau that are struck out from the Core Worlds. They've obviously had the issues with the Warp Rift and now they're the fourth phase sphere expansion sort of led astray by, you know, all the comings of the dark times in the galaxy. It is things like their stealth uh, suits and both the Ghost Neil and their regular stealth suits and also the other work of their other battle suits and stuff like that uh, and how they sort of interact on the battlefield and how hard it is to combat them and how Space Marines have to fight differently and how they are able to make these sort of tactics and these adaptions to their plans. Um, they're just really, really well portrayed in this and made to seem like a true threat to any and all servants of the Imperium within this story, which I think is really really good stuff like having a strong and powerful adversary and making a another faction look strong and powerful within these stories is incredibly important and i think this story really does a good job of making the tower seem like a utterly credible threat to the dark angels and so who would actually like this story? Obviously, this story is primarily about the Dark Angels. So if you're looking for something about the Dark Angels that talks a little bit about the Primaris Marines and their early sort of bits and pieces they play around the Dark Angels chapter, this is a good story for you. But also, like like I said, one of the best bits about this story is the Tau and the way they're portrayed. If you like Tau, I think you could get a decent amount of enjoyment out of the story. Yes, you are the bad guys. Yes, you are going to be probably on the losing side in different parts of this story but i do think the tower get a really good rub in this i think some of the cool parts that you've seen in this is really nice for the tower fighting against the tower is really cool in this um so i think if you're a fan of the tower you probably would like this story as well it's not going to be something you're coming out on the top of um but you know it is another story featuring the army prominently and from a good position and so, in summary, fun and good adversaries in this really make for a strong story. Uh, though, maybe at times there was parts of this I did find a little bit hard to follow, but maybe that could have been me. I did listen to this one over a pretty decent span of time, uh, and a little bit brokenly. Uh, but, I think, for me, there were some unrewarding endings to particular sort of plot lines and particular characters within the story. Um, but, I will say, while unrewarding... They did feel 40k, um, they did feel very 40k, some of these endings that maybe I didn't get the ending I wanted, uh, maybe the thing didn't go down the way I wanted to, but they were very 40k, very grimdark in the way they ended and how it all sort of came, so, you know, maybe that's just my own personal preferences that I didn't like some of the endings, but... I did enjoy this story. I think um, Farron was an interesting character. I like the Dark Angels as a chapter. Um, this was solid. Um, I would say I probably would say out of the three Space Marine conquest stories I've read so far it's probably my least favorite but I would probably still give this a solid five or six out of ten if I could and so that is the end of the video thank you all for watching we hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to come chat more with me we have a discord server for the channel and that is linked down in the video's description 
Also linked down in the video's description are the best ways to help support the channel. This is either via Patreon or YouTube members using one of our affiliate links and codes down there like Baron of Dice, Gap Games or Mithras Games or by supporting us directly on Patreon or YouTube members. If you'd like to do any of those, we have links for that all in the description. And as a special thank you to our Patreons and YouTube members, we'd like to give them all a shout out. So thank you to our Patreons, Soren, Kenny Lowell, Alder and Shot First, Andrew Bowen, Cure Dynamic, JJ Austrian, Average Wargaming, Domir, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Benjamin Swallows, Red Martin, Iron Grinch, Colorblind Magic, Grimscold, and Andy C. And our YouTube members, Green Roots Gaming, Ronya, Lock Loric, The Johnny84, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Rev. R, Pink Nico Fire, Robin Mankiller, Monty's Tabletop Terrain, James Tillman, Disco, and John Castle. Lastly, a special thanks to Lady Witch Fox Art, who does all the amazing artwork you see on the channel. Once again, everyone, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment down below. Stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the Grey. Ciao for now.